Hi, this is Erling. And this is Judy with Travel Trail Sail. And today we are at Machic Comico State Park, Virginia's newest state park located on the York River in Gloucester, Virginia. The heart of Machacomico State Park is the interpretive area and there's three major items here. Uh, there is a timeline that's built on a, a railroad line and shows the major milestones along history from prehistory all the way to modern times and provides some great interpretive information around the, the people who lived in this area. There's also the center stone which has a map of all the communities, historic and current, uh, for the area. Uh, and they're etched into the top of a round stone. And along the edge is the names of all the peoples who lived here. Uh, there's also a historic home, which is currently being restored. It had some major issues with foundation and chimneys and things, and, and they're currently rebuilding that. And that'll be a, a nice, interesting landmark as well. In the interpretive area, there are also two large picnic shelters. Uh, they're beautiful, they do have a grill. Uh, one thing you may note is that there isn't a, a playground or that kind of thing for the kids, so you may want to bring some outdoor games or some activities uh, to keep your group entertained. Uh, also from the interpretive area, you can grab some trails. There is the interpretive trail, which takes you down by the house towards the river for some nice overlooks of the, of the water. There's a forest trail that allows you to hike in the woods. And there's also the state park loop. It's about a three mile uh, road that goes around the park and next to it is a paved walking path. So a lot to see and uh, do here. I suggest you start your visit here at the interpretive area. Number one reason for people to visit Machacomico State Park is that it is 645 acres of awesomeness. Mm -hmm. It's Virginia's newest state park. This is number 40 for Virginia. And at Machacomico, although we're brand new, there's a whole lot going on. Uh, along with the 645 acres of awesomeness, we have three hiking trails, about 6.1 miles of hiking trail. We also have uh, RV camping, we have a uh, tent, and we have three yurts. We also have a uh, boat launch, we have fishing pier, and just uh, an area that gives uh, homage to the Native American tribes that were located in this area. It makes Machacomico very, very different and unique. And so you have an opportunity to engage with nature, but an opportunity, a greater opportunity to engage with the history of this area in an authentic way. It sounds like there's a lot of history to the area that a lot of people may not know. There were about 30 uh, nations that were uh, part of this area. And actually only about 13 of them are recognized by the federal government and the state of Virginia. However, the history is tremendous. It was uh, the area where the Algonquin and the Powhatan tribes formed a confederacy, which made it the largest uh, Indian uh, nation confederacy in this area. And at Machacomico, you have an opportunity to actually walk in the same path that Powhatan walked in, Chief Powhatan, mm -hmm. and the chiefs of the Algonquin and the Pamunkey and the Chickahominy tribesmen. You have an opportunity to engage with the flora and the fauna that the Native American tribes engaged with. And you have a tremendous opportunity 
to learn about a history that's been diminished or in a lot of instances demolished. So that's what makes Master Comica special. Beautiful spot here, absolutely gorgeous. And it's a sunny day. You can see, got this nice uh, side pad here with a picnic table, and got our awning out. It's kind of down a little bit against the shade or against the sun right now, just to give us a little bit of shade. And oh, hey, look, it's Judy. Oh, hey there. Nice to see you out here, Judy. It's it's a we got the awning out, I was, I was just sharing, because yes. it's uh, sunny today. It is sunny. It is very sunny today. Beautiful day. But uh, this is a very sunny park, so I'm very thankful for our awning. Um, but, yeah, if you come to this park, just, uh, you know, be prepared for a lot of sun. We saw campers that had, you know, like the sunshade, like shelters either over a dog area or they had it even over their tent to provide shade because um, it's it's sunny. And there's not a lot of trees here. There are a no. few kind of pine trees or whatever, but it's mostly an open grassy area between the campsites. A lot of room in between the campsites, but. Oh, very spacious. I mean, the campsites are awesome. They're, they're all level, plenty of room, um, but very bright. In fact, I should go get my sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, so if you're going to be camping here in, say, July or August, it would be good to have an air conditioner. Uh, yes. We've got ours, and, and it's only May and ours is running. Yes. Um, like today is supposed to be a high of 90. And if you've ever been to Virginia, the southeastern part of Virginia, it, July, August can get incredibly hot and humid. So just be prepared uh, for that. I would recommend a lot of water and plenty of sunscreen um, here. This is just so exciting to have this brand new state park um, here in Gloucester, Virginia. It's a great uh, 
park and I think it's just so great how they are you know honoring and remembering the people that first lived on this land um, it's very historical so if you're into history this is a great place to camp and then you can from here go visit Yorktown Williamsburg um, so much history in this area so uh, this would be a great place to be like your home base campground while you're visiting all those sites There's a camp host right at the entrance. It's uh, recommended that you would go to Reserve America and select your site and just show you the sign here. It is for tent camping, $25 for Virginia residents. Non-residents is 30. And if you want to water an electric, which is an RV site, Virginia residents $35, and if you're out of state, $40. And you can pay here, but if you've reserved your site online, you'd go ahead and pay right then. As we're walking around Machacomico State Park, this is a brand new campground, and it shows. It's, it's very new and very nice. There are 14 RV sites, 13 10 sites and three yurts. Some of those RV sites are like site number one here, which is a pull-through site. All of them come with 50 amp electricity, uh, water, and a nice pad next to your site with a picnic table and a campfire ring. There's a few trees in the campground, but as we're walking around, you'll see most of the trees are on the edge of the campground and inside is more grassy areas. So sites one and two are, are really nice paved pull through sites, uh, but you would be facing uh, the main road of the park. So just FYI for you. Well, give you a, we can actually walk right through and you can see there's the road, it's a little ways away, but yeah, the main park road is there. We'll go ahead and walk right through. This is site number two. And there's your water and electric. And again, everything's brand new, so uh, so far we didn't find any issues with the electricity. Worked really well. Around the perimeter, a lot of nice trees, just a mix of hardwoods and pines. few more pull-throughs. Site 3 that we're coming up on here is a pull-through and if you chose that one you'd actually end up facing into the woods. So Machacomoco they said is a special gathering place right and they tried to come up with a word for it that would show that they're they're doing native uh, interpretation and telling the history of this land and they wanted a special name and, and that's the name they came up with. I think it would be a great place to gather. Oh absolutely. I think any site here would be a great place to gather with friends and family and just enjoy the outside and the outdoors and uh, enjoy each other's company. You got tent sites back here into the woods. There's a gathering. I think of three tent sites back there. And, you know, adjacent to all the tent sites there is, of course, parking. And as we come down the main loop, you can see nice large RV sites. A couple of Class A's enjoying their time here in the park. Yeah, all the sites are I think, you know, easy to get into, could accommodate pretty much, I think, any size rig, and uh, just pretty level, so it makes getting into your site and setting up pretty easy, so, and 
Also, there's lots of space in between the sites, which it is really nice. Is. The, the side pads are huge, and then the space the sites are spaced out nicely. Now, we did mention you know sites one and two were paved. The rest of them are gravel, but it's all freshly packed, nice gravel and level sites. I think on ours we put one block on one side. Right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and show you an example of one of those back end sites. This is site nine, and it's right next to the bathhouse here. So it's at a little bit of an angle to the road, making it back, backing in a little easier. And then you can see we just walk right in, very deep site. And then the land around it, you can see not a lot of shade at the moment, mostly grassland. One thing to note here, uh, that the utilities are here all the way on the back of the site. So you have a back end site with your utilities at the rear. So if your utilities are towards the front of your camper, just note that you may need to make sure you've got the right lengths of hoses and electric to connect. It's a very, very quiet campground because it isn't, you know, pretty small. Uh, but it's, it was super quiet. Um, the, the one surprise we had is that apparently, every, you know, every morning the Naval Weapons Station across the York River will play the Star Spangled Banner as they raise the flag, <laughs> which is, you know, it was kind of cool. Yeah, um, <laughs> nice tradition for yeah. sure. Showing you these nice brand new bathhouses. One thing that's really cool is there's a water bottle filling station. We did not hear road noise, trains, Train, yep. almost no air traffic, just a few small planes. We're going to keep on walking. We've got three sites in a row here on the other side of the bathhouse, 16, 17, and 18. All back in sites. And across from them, hang on, is lots of tent camping kind of right along the edge of the woods. You can see there's a lot of trees that have been planted. And I think as those mature, those tent camping sites will end up having more privacy. But that's where we're parked on site 18. You can see our very long rig has plenty of room. No issue at all getting in or out of the site. And It's a nice site because it is uh, one of the few that has a few trees, so it does give you a little bit of afternoon shade. Absolutely. Bright in the morning, but a little afternoon mm -hmm. shade, which is nice. Yeah. And lots of space between us and our neighbors. Coming up, you can see we've got... Well, this would be... If you were tent camping, hang on, this would be really nice. Check this out. You're in the woods here. Just going to walk back in a little bit. If you wanted to tent camp and wanted some shade, here you've got site 22, and right next to it, site 21. And talk about nice tent camping sites, perfectly shaded, water access really handy here. So if I was tent camping, that's the sites I would look for. Yep, and you can kind of see the river through the trees, but I bet when the leaves drop, you could really get a nice view. Absolutely. I think if you were here in the winter, you would actually see a little bay off the York River. Not sure if the park will be open in the winter, but we'll see. Some of the Virginia parks are open year-round, but not all of them. So we don't know if this one's going to be a year-round park or not yet, but it would be a nice place to come. Yeah, absolutely. We've got three yurts here and uh, parking for each of those. Now the yurts do come with the same amenities as a campsite. So you've got your picnic table and fire ring, nice place to sit outside. I like how they have a deck built all around them. Mm -hmm. It's nice.
Matcha Comico is in Gloucester, Virginia. And you might not know, or you might not be familiar with the area, but there's a couple of things. We asked a, a Gloucester local to give us some recommendations of what to see and what to do when we're in the area. And we came up with three that we're gonna to recommend to you. Two of them we had a chance to test. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we're all about food. <laughs> so these are food recommendations and uh, we'll just go with that. And, and the first one is in a historic area, the actual, they call it Gloucester Courthouse. And that was the original sort of town of Gloucester. Right, but it's, uh... Main Street, Gloucester. It's a cute little Main Street area. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, different little shops and restaurants. But uh, one that was recommended to us was the Northern Neck Popcorn Bag. Uh, mm. Good yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they have more popcorn than I've ever seen. I mean, more uh, like variety of flavors. And they had um, three categories like candy, specialty, and savory. Mm -hmm. And you could sample you know different flavors um and let me tell you they had one that was apple pie popcorn and, and it, it tasted like an apple pie. it tasted like apple pie like it, it was crazy they had a, a lemon <laughs> that tasted like a lemon cream pie or or some kind of lemon dessert yeah i mean all kinds of flavors so uh really a cute little place uh super friendly mm -hmm. uh staff and just very patient with us as we were trying to figure out of all the flavors they had, which ones we wanted. Like We ended up buying four. It was yeah. so hard. I, I wanted some of all of them. They mm -hmm. were all so good. But, yeah. well, I don't know if I'd have gone for the biscuits and sausage gravy. Uh, I bet it tasted <laughs> just like biscuits and sausage gravy, but how could I get that when they had s'mores and Oreo? Yes. And, and, yeah. And so. those are the ones we went for. <laughs> <laughs> So that's number one, is, mm -hmm. is, is the Northern Neck Popcorn Bag. And we didn't get to try it, but literally a block up the road from there was a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Called oh. Lulu Bird's Kitchen. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was closed uh, when we went. Um, but we've heard again from a local person here that it's really, really good and worth checking out. Now, they uh, apparently will do takeout, which is good. Uh, they did have uh, dining as well in there. We could see they were set up for that. Uh, but if you're the kind who prefers to take take out and, and eat it in your camper, uh, it looked like they offered that as well. And, and from the campground, that downtown Gloucester area, what would you say? Maybe 15 minutes. Yeah. Easy drive uh, and plenty of parking. So uh, definitely worth checking out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the third place was this amazing... A uh, homemade ice cream shop called uh, Short Lane Ice mm, Cream. Yeah. And oh my, their ice cream was so good, so good. And it's all homemade there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in a really cute. It's like a older house, but they converted it into an ice cream parlor. But yeah. it has like the old ice cream par parlor theme and all kinds of like memorabilia from like an old ice cream shop. Um, yeah really neat super tasty ice cream oh gosh yes uh we've been told that there's often a line like we went in the afternoon and it wasn't bad at all but if you were to go in the evening there might be a line but plenty of outside seating which was nice uh and we ended up getting some really tasty ice cream and uh, that oh, was a, yes. a, a fantastic treat so short lane ice cream it's right on the main uh, highway through gloucester and it was tasty. So these are places that <laughs> we recommend. We, we can't wait to try Lulu Birds when we get a chance to come back again. And uh, hope that you enjoy those as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you, if you have a recommendation in Gloucester that we missed, we'd love to hear about it. We're mm -hmm. always open to trying new places. And so uh, just leave a comment and, and uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on it too. That's right, yeah. Thanks for joining us on our tour of Machacomico State Park. It's uh, Virginia's 40th state park, brand new. It's off to a great start. And uh, we tried to give you a tour, show you things like the interpretive center, uh, the campground, hiking trails. Hopefully it was helpful mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, of course, we always appreciate the support. That can be through subscribing to our channel, uh, checking out our site, where you can find information on not only this park, but our other travels.
Um, we have an email newsletter. If you don't want to miss anything, you can sign up for our email newsletter. And once a month, uh, we won't spam you, but we'll try and show you what we've been learning for the month and, and uh, post links to all the articles and videos and everything. So uh, we appreciate the support and uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, we'll see you next time.